Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Don here welcoming you to another episode of the Medical Facts YouTube series. Today we're going to talk a little bit about asthma. I'm on my way to Cocoa Beach to check out the beach on this cloudy, somewhat cool day. Car says 73 degrees, but feels a lot cooler than that when you're outside in the breeze. In any case, we'll talk about asthma because cold air does seem to be one of the things that aggravates asthma control. Basically, if you take a normal person and you inhale something noxious like fumes from Clorox or ammonia, if the dose is high enough, it will create inflammation in your airways, even in a normal person. If you were to look at the airways, such as with the bronchoscope, you might see some redness and swelling and excessive mucus production. If you're the patient experiencing this, you would feel congestion and cough. This inflammation like the chemicals in your blood and in your airways that creates more inflammation and then bronchoconstriction. The airways are narrowed from the edema as well as from the bronchoconstriction and this creates wheezing, which is a sound of air passing through an area of turbulent airflow due to narrowing of the airways. In asthma, we usually talk about wheezing as being polyphonic wheezing because it's not just one airway blowing the trumpet is lots of airways, all with different tunes depending on the amount of airflow and the diameter of the airways. This inflammatory process, once started, may even last a few days. That would be somebody that does not have asthma, but it, who would inhale, for example, chlorine fumes. If you look at someone with asthma, inhaling cold air or doing exercise or inhaling a little bit of smoke or having an allergic reaction to something might cause all those same reactions. So in asthma, the airways are hyper-responsive or over-reactive, or sometimes people refer to it as reactive airway disease. These people have a hair trigger towards inflammation, and depending on the severity, they could have normal lung function one day and very severely reduced lung function another day. With asthma, with asthma, this increased airway resistance tends to cause trouble breathing out, and when this happens chronically, it actually leads to overinflation of the lungs and inability to exercise because you can't really breathe rapidly if it takes a long time to push the air through the narrowed airways. We typically use bronchodilators to treat this, which would be medicines such as albuterol, and the albuterol works on the smooth muscles around these airways to cause relaxation and can open up the airways to a point. This can restore airflow and reduce wheezing and reduce the symptoms. But albuterol as a bronchodilator does not do anything about the inflammatory process. The inflammatory process, if severe enough, generally has to be treated with steroids. It can be done with pills, which you could take for a few days perhaps if you're in the midst of a flare up but steroids, while very effective and very inexpensive, have seemingly a hundred side effects. Everything from creating cataracts to weight gain to increased blood sugar to even psychiatric changes. So systemically administer steroids by pills or vein or injection is not a good long-term solution for asthma. People with more than trivial asthma typically require an inhaled corticosteroid, and there are many of these on the market including Arnuti, Flovent, Qvar, various other uh, agents, Pulmacort by Nebulizer, Advair, Brio, Trelogy, all these include an inhaled steroid, sometimes in combination with bronchodilators. These maintenance medications usually have to be taken every day, sometimes twice a day, uh, maybe forever, though there are patients that only really are bothered with asthma during certain seasons, particularly when allergy is part of the deal but these inhalers have to be taken regularly, even on the good days, to maintain good asthma control. The third category of medications that we've been using in recent years is certain types of asthma, whether it's allergic asthma or something known as eosinophilic asthma, may respond to genetically engineered or biological medications, which are typically delivered by injection once or twice a month. These medicines are usually called for in people that have poor control of their asthma and asthma symptoms in spite of the regular use 
uh, relatively high doses of inhaled corticosteroids. These medicines are all expensive, and we typically do blood testing and allergy testing to try to characterize exactly what type of asthma a patient suffers from so that we can tailor the use of the biologics to their particular type of asthma. These medicines can help a lot or not help at all, depending on whether the patient has a mixed type of asthma or not. For example, there's a medication called omalizumab. It is an anti-IgE antibody genetically engineered to deactivate your immunoglobulin E, which is responsible for presenting allergens, the things you're allergic to, to the cells that release histamine leading to bronchospasm. If your asthma is 100% of an allergic basis, these injections basically eliminate your ability to respond in an allergic way to any stimulus. Therefore, it can make a huge difference in your asthma. But if allergy only makes up 25% of your asthma, the results are going to be much less impressive. In any case, what is good asthma control? Good asthma control means you don't need your rescue inhaler more than a few doses a week. If you're needing it more than a few doses a week, or you're being woken up with nighttime symptoms, or your asthma is interfering with living your life in the way you want to live it, that asthma should be considered uncontrolled. And this is when you should consider seeing a specialist, such as a pulmonologist, such as myself, or sometimes allergists. What about the difference between seeing an allergist and a pulmonologist? Well, the allergist typically is a primarily outpatient doctor who will deal with things like immunotherapy and also the inhalers. Many can do pulmonary function testing, but not all. They are not generally the ones that will take care of you if you get sick and admitted to the hospital. That will generally fall to the pulmonary doctors. So the pulmonary doctor will manage the outpatient asthma as well as the inpatient, but without such emphasis on immunotherapy. If someone is allergic to a lot of things, medications like the omalizumab may be better because it'll treat all the allergies with one injection. If the only thing positive on your allergy is your cat and you refuse to uh, get rid of the cat, having allergy shots to desensitize you to the cat might be a good idea and we would typically refer you to an allergist for that purpose. In any case, Pay attention to your asthma. There's still like 5,000 deaths per year in the United States alone from asthma that is poorly controlled. And even healthcare workers are susceptible. I've personally taken care of three healthcare workers, one radiology technician and two nurses that died as a result of asthma that got out of control. And because they were using albuterol without using the anti-inflammatory and health steroid, their asthma got worse and worse. And by the time they came to the hospital, they were the point of losing consciousness, and the inflammation was so bad they really couldn't be saved. Steroids take a few days to work, so you can't really wait till your airways are 100% closed to start the treatment. So take asthma seriously, get it under good control, hold yourself and your physician to a high standard of control. You want to be at the point where your rescue inhaler is not needed more than a few times a week. If you're using it every day, something needs to be done to improve that control. And while, you're, while I'm thinking about it, don't forget to like the video, share the video with your friends or others who suffer from asthma or who are caretakers of people that have asthma. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Comments and questions below, I'll try to respond to every comment if you have additional questions about asthma or other medical topics. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.